One question that crops up all the time is which is the most powerful CO2 replica air pistol? Maybe it's time to explain a thing or two to the people who ask this question. And here I go again, sticking my neck on the block. Here goes. Hello and welcome to AAR on Air. Yes, today I'm going to look a little closer into which is the most powerful question around CO2 pistols and delve a little deeper into what people are actually asking. And at the end, I'm going to make a bit of a wildcard suggestion that may be relevant in these strange times we live in. Maybe. You see, a question like that is usually a precursor to the question they really want to ask. And in doing so, they often get confused around speed and power. You see, mostly it's because they're looking to see which is going to do something or someone most harm. Certainly with regard to the second point, which was power. The speed part doesn't necessarily mean or directly reflect power. Firstly, let's try to clarify this part first. Apart from some CO2 pistols looking the part for, say, self-defence, it all falls apart if you have to use it in an actual self-defence situation. Not long ago I made a video around air guns for self-defence and the whole point was... No, they really aren't suitable. If it came down to the wire you'd be better off with a good pair of running shoes. Well, you get the idea. So the power thing is irrelevant in this situation because none of them have enough power for that potentially dreadful and possibly law-breaking situation. The other point people are looking at power for is pest control. And no, again, not suitable. A, you need way more power than a CO2 pistol can kick out in most cases to cleanly dispatch a pest of any size. And B, pistols are by their very nature less accurate than, say, a rifle. So you're not likely to hit it cleanly for a quick dispatch anyway. Unless, of course, you're pretty much on top of it. The guidance here, then, would be get a rifle if you really want to do a spot of pest control. That's the truth behind the power question. What about the speed question? Well, again, they're usually looking for power and are getting speed and power mixed up. People do seem to get confused around the speed and power issue, and really you need to add a third element into the equation for it to make any sense at all. Let me give you an example. If you've ever flicked anybody with the old tea towel trick, by the time the tea towel hits the intended target's rear end, it's travelling at a terrific speed. A little like a whip which actually breaks the sound barrier with the final flick, hence the crack sound. Now the person's posterior on the receiving end is likely to get ooh, a sharp sting, but not much more because it's only light cloth that's travelling at high velocity. Now the returning smack around the face is travelling considerably slower, but is likely to have the full weight of the annoyed individual behind it, and is likely to hurt a lot more. But, joking aside, if, say, a hammer was travelling at the same speed that the tea towel in this example was, the damage would be considerable. Hopefully this example proves that you need three things to make the equation work. Speed, mass, and then you have your all-important power figure. So, is it possible to say which is the fastest CO2 pistol? Yes, but it would need you to shoot some extremely light projectile to achieve this prestigious title. But it is likely to be pretty irrelevant by the time it reaches the target in terms of usefulness. Thinking about that power argument. Hopefully that's cleared that bit up. Now let's put it into some practical examples. 
Let's start with a bit of a favourite of mine and show you how it works in real life. The Glock 17 Gen 4. This is a BB based CO2 blowback pistol and is an amazing replica. It's made to give the user the close to real feel of the real thing and yet it doesn't have the same restrictions as a real firearm. Let's gas this up at around 19 degrees centigrade. I mention the temperature because CO2 pistols are notoriously affected by temperature. The colder they are, the slower they become. And they also create their own cold too. I'm going to shoot this with three different weights of BBs. Compare the speed, which is calculated in feet per second or FPS. And then I'll convert it into power, which is measured in foot pounds or joules of energy. The three BBs are 8.18 grain gamma lead BBs, Umarex 5.37 grain standard steel BBs, and some super light 2.02 grain plastic BBs. All of these are 4.5 millimeter, and none of the guns in this review are airsoft guns. To start with, the Glock 17 doesn't like the gammos and simply jams up, so no result there. But to prove the point, the standard steel BBs reached 303 feet per second, which equates to 1.1 foot-pounds or 1.48 joules. So nothing really to write home about. And as I said at the start, these are not power guns. Now let's compare the plastic ultra lightweights. These hit a terrific 450 feet per second, which shows a higher speed gun, as people often ask for, but feed these figures into the power equation and you finish up with 0.91 foot pounds or 1.23 joules of energy, which highlights the point I made earlier. More speed doesn't necessarily mean more power, and in this example, means less. 50% increase in speed, meant 17% reduction in power due to the lighter projectile. Now, some of the power is often lost in the blowback action of this type of gun and can also lose speed by the shortness of the barrel, which we'll check out later. Now, let's do the same type of test, but with a Glock 17 dual ammo to show what happens with different weights when using pellets. Again, to show the differences in speeds, I'm going to be using different weight pellets. The standard 8.44 grain, some lighter 7.33 grain RS, both incidentally are lead pellets, and some ultra light alloy pellets from H&N, weighing in at a featherweight 5.71 grain. These should definitely increase the velocity. Using the standard 8.44 grain saw 337 feet per second, which equates to 2.13 foot-pounds or 2.89 joules. Shoot the lighter RS pellets and the speed increases to 362 FPS, and yet the power output remains exactly the same at 2.13 foot-pounds or 2.89 joules. Shoot the ultra lightweight alloys through it, and yes, the speed increases to 373 feet per second, but the power level drops to 1.76 foot pounds or 2.39 joules, proving the point yet again. Now, the beauty of this dual ammo pistol is the ability to shoot BBs as well. So we can do a direct comparison on the ammo types from the same gun and check out the power levels. Heavier gammos saw 229 feet per second, which is considerably slower than its nearest equivalent pellet. And as such, the power level also dropped to 0.95 foot-pounds or 1.29 joules. Feed it the standard steel BBs and the speed increases. But whilst the power levels do increase to 1.48 foot-pounds or 2 joules, it isn't as high a power level as the pellets in the same gun. This is probably down to the pellet being a better fit in the barrel. Finally on this pistol, we had the plastic BBs into the mix. 
the speed increase to 454 feet per second and again the power levels drop to 0.92 foot pounds or 1.25 joules. We're starting to see a pattern here and proving a point around the speed and power point. What about non-blowback pistols then? Let's look at another favourite of mine, the Beretta M92 FS. This is a German-made pistol and is stunning. It is full weight and focuses more on accuracy rather than blowback type feel. It uses a round drop-in eight-shot magazine shooting pellets. These magazines are pretty commonplace in a lot of Umrex pistols and even some of their rifles. They are a doddle to use and you can even use a speed loader with them to make the whole process that little bit quicker and easier. Let's take a look at the results with this one, shall we? Just pellets then in this one. The 8.44 gave 308 feet per second, which is 1.78 foot pounds or 2.41 joules. With lighter 7.33 grains, it saw a slightly faster figure of 327 FPS, which reduced the power levels to 1.74 foot pounds or 2.36 joules. However, it did quite like the alloys and saw the feet per second increase to 423 giving a power level of 2.27 foot-pounds or 3.08 joules. In real terms, this was an increase of nearly 30% in speed, which in this case did equate to 30% increase in power. Spoiler alert, this is the only pistol that actually showed those types of results. I touched on accuracy and said this is more accurate. It is. But this test is about power and I won't be looking into accuracy, but I can look at it in another review if people want me to. Often non-blowbacks are slightly more powerful than blowback guns due to the lack of waste of air in that blowback action. In this case the difference isn't huge, but the likelihood is the shot count would be higher, again because of non-wastage of CO2. Remember what I said about barrel length? Let's take a look at some of the shorter replica types and see what the results are. I've got three different pistols here with shorter barrels. They are the Beretta 84, the Walther PPKS and the Tiny Sig P365. The barrels on these are considerably shorter and all of these have a blowback action. The smaller guns do indeed have a lower speed and ultimately a lower power level due to the length of time the projectile stays in the barrel with the air still accelerating it down the barrel. The PPKS and the SIG P365 both gave maximum power figures of less than one foot pounds or 1.3 joules, with the P365 being the slightly slower of the two. The Beretta 82 did prove itself to be the exception to the rule, as this was hitting figures of 1.75 foot-pounds or 2.37 joules, and even saw 538 feet per second. Using those plastic BBs, giving 1.3 foot-pounds or 1.76 joules. The likelihood is a reduced shot count per CO2 though. Next up, revolvers then. Let's give one or two of these a go. How about the Webley Mark VI service revolver? This is loaded with pellets in this example into the back of the shells. Then they are in turn loaded into the pistol. Great fun, a terrific replica and a firm favourite of mine. Power output test then. I know that this is capable of slightly higher figures than most CO2 pistols, because I have one, and this is it. And I've tested it quite often. I also know it's pretty accurate too, by the way. It's pellets again, and with 8.44 grain saw 352 feet per second, which is 2.32 foot pounds, or 3.15 joules. With RS pellets, it saw 396 feet per second, which is 2.55 foot-pounds or 3.46 joules. 
and with the alloys on board saw 441 feet per second which is 2.47 foot pounds or 3.34 joules pretty good but again no blowback a longer barrel and the pellets also load into the back of the shells which effectively makes the barrel that little bit longer too a point which i'll prove next most replica type revolvers nowadays load the projectile into the back of the shell but some used to load them in the front this is an ASG and has the front loading shells which is a more complex system of unscrewing the top of each shell preloading them with a 177 pellet and then screwing the tops back on this is where the whole thing gets interesting and proves the point about barrel length because if we load this up with front loading shells and fire that over the chrono it achieved 215 feet per second with 8.44 grain pellets now if we pop in rear loading shells into the same gun then the feet per second figures increase to 267 which is around 25 percent increase in speed the only reason for this increase in velocity is the length of the shell and the extra distance the pellet is traveling which is effectively extending the length of the barrel and allows the pellet a longer duration in the barrel allowing the air more time behind the pellet to build that velocity so if you have an older front loading type revolver a simple modification is by the rear loading shells that increase happens with all the different pellet types and weights and as you would expect the longer 8 inch barrel does increase the speed even more add to that the longer shell distance of the rear loaders and the power goes up again but don't get too excited because the power level is still only a maximum of 1.76 foot pounds or 2.38 joules and that was achieving the 8.44 grain pellets at this point we've covered off BBs, pellets, blowback, non-blowback, revolvers, both front and rear loading, and the maximum power we've achieved is 2.55 foot-pounds or 3.46 joules with the Webley Mark VI. This goes to show that CO2 pistols are not about power. They are more about the shooting experience and fun. At this point, I should simply say thank you and good night. But... Let's take a moment to see what types of pistols are likely to give you a little more in the power stakes. Well, you have a few options really. If we exclude PCPs, which are capable of some pretty high figures, there are some more power-focused and tuned CO2 pistols, such as the Crosmans, or off-the-shelf spring-action pistols, such as this Viroc HW45, which saw 4.2 foot-pounds over the chrono and such as this little gem the Umarek Strike Point which is a pump action in 2-2 and saw 4.9 foot-pounds with a few pumps it must be said that this is great fun and less than 60 pounds UK How's that for a bit of lockdown fun with no additional costs of CO2s to buy? The conclusion here then is, if you want to know which is the most powerful CO2 pistol, certainly replica types, in this test it's been the Webley Mark VI. But if you want power, then buy the strike point and you'll still have money left over to be able to buy yourself a pretty decent CO2 replica pistol anyway that's it no doubt i will have some of the viewers from across the pond already typing to tell me of some 50 cal pistol that's available in the states but we are limited to six foot pounds here so hence the reason i didn't look into such pistols 
As always, a thumbs up if you found this interesting, hit the subscribe button for more reviews and tests, etc. Don't forget to click the alarm bell to be notified when new ones are out. And check out all the forums and blogs and stuff that's available and the merchandise. And of course, thanks to Vector Air for the use of some of these guns. The ones that weren't mine, that is. You know what? I've enjoyed this one. It's been interesting, just exploding a few myths and hopefully explaining where the power figures can be affected. Well, this time that is it. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you next week.